And as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good evening. On Monday, Thursday, we remember two things Jesus gave his disciples at his last meal with them. As Jesus lifted the bread and cup, he gave his church a new covenant of forgiveness and by saying, do this in remembrance of me, he made the Eucharist a perpetual ordinance, like the Passover meal, meant to build up his body, the church. In addition, Jesus also gave his disciples a new <coughs> commandment. After humbly washing his disciples' feet, he said to them, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Tonight, the Lord's Supper and the new commandment to love one another are the core of Christian worship and service to others in this world. Indeed, the word liturgy or liturgia in Greek which we translate as service, as in worship service, means not just an order of worship, but it is God's service to us and our service to one another and our service to this world. In Holy Communion, Jesus is the host, serving us through bread and wine, his body and blood, with forgiveness that frees us to serve one another and the world freely as his disciples. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper is what establishes the church as a community continually fed and forgiven by grace so that we might sacramentally live each day in loving service in this world. After supper, by washing his disciples' feet, Jesus set an example that Christians are to serve others through humble service. Asking us to imitate him, Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. This word, servants, or doulos in Greek, meaning a slave or a servant, who does the kind of menial tasks that the wealthy and the powerful think it beneath them to do for others. Jesus chose the example of washing feet because in antiquity, when everyone wore sandals, traveling over unpaved roads, washing the feet of guests was a common sign of hospitality. When guests arrived at someone's home, they were greeted and their feet washed by a slave or a servant to that household. To the great surprise of Peter and the disciples, Jesus himself performed this task and in doing so shows us that he is the Lord of this house and also the servant king, humbly serving all people. His new commandment is, just as I have loved you, you also ought to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Not only in church, but in all our life, our Christian service is to imitate the example of Jesus. Today, for most of us, washing the feet of a guest isn't something that we expect when we are welcomed into someone's home. But imagine if you were homeless and truly had no home or place to bathe. 
I was thinking about this today as I gave towels to a homeless guest in the soup kitchen so he could take a shower downstairs. And afterwards, as I washed, dried, and folded the towels that he had used today. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. Jesus told his disciples these words because his disciples were about to be sent into the world as his representatives, as his missionaries, as his followers, as his hands, feet, and voices in this world. They would be persecuted and even killed for their service to Jesus Christ. And yet the church grew and overtook the entire ancient world through their love for one another and their witness of love to the world. We call many of these early Christians martyrs because the Greek word martyros means to witness. The church grew because of a witness to Jesus' love that his disciples performed, carried out, shared with the world. We still see it all around us, that people have not changed very much since Jesus' day. The rich and the powerful often expect to be served rather than using their power and wealth in humble service to others. Many pay lip service to Jesus' word, while everything about Jesus shows the humility of God's Son, who came to serve rather than to be served. Jesus did the work of a servant that today we might expect immigrants, foreigners, and the poor to do, rather than, do, to do, rather than doing these humble tasks ourselves. These humble acts of love matter, not only in this church building, but they matter as we live them out in our daily lives. I think that before someone is given the keys to a corner office, the test for anyone desiring to become a public servant should be to ask if they are willing to wash the towel willing to wash the floor or clean the restrooms in the building in which they work or the churches in which they worship. I'd like to tell you a story. When I served as a missionary in Japan, I remember a man at my church in Tokyo who was a high-level public servant in the Japanese government. So high was his office that he served as a member of the prime minister's cabinet. This man's corner office was high up in one of the government buildings in the Kasumigaseki district of Tokyo, where all of the governmental offices are. And his corner office overlooked the imperial palace grounds. By any standard in this world, his vast office suggested great power and authority. Yet this soft-spoken and powerful man swept the street in front of the church, helped clean the church restrooms and washed dishes after every congregational meal. He was a public servant who answered to the prime minister of a nation, while also understanding that humble service in public flows from imitating his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Tonight on Monday, Thursday, we remember that in the breaking of the bread, Jesus instituted for us a new covenant of forgiveness that frees us to live in service to our neighbor in this world. In the words of institution, Jesus says this supper is given for you, meaning that he gives you grace that forgives and frees you to live in his name every day. In saying, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me, Jesus means that we should partake of the Eucharist as often as we can so that we might more and more rely upon the grace 
that frees us to live with courage for our neighbor in this world. We are fed and forgiven by Christ that we might humbly serve him in this world. This is what we do at St. Mark's. Jesus sets a table for us and feeds us and forgives us so that we might imitate him, so that we might set tables for fellowship, so that we might set tables for our neighbors, so that we might offer a safe place to stay during the cold months in room in the inn, so that we might even wash and dry towels for someone without a home. Holy Communion is service that prepares us for sacramental service in this world to our neighbor. I'd like to ask you to look at the cross that faces us this evening and think as you meditate on the veiling of that cross later tonight in the service. Jesus gave his life for you and for this world, for you and for your neighbor, so that your life might have meaning, so that through your life he might work and share his humility and power. Use your power, use all of your gifts that Christ has given you so that you might share him in loving service to your neighbor. You are his hand, his feet, and his voices in this world. Love one another as he has loved you. With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us be together in prayer. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord Jesus, you have set us an example of your love in sacrifice and service. In a world where the powerful continue to demand allegiance to themselves without sacrificing and serving others, embolden your church throughout the world to love you as you have loved us. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, you teach us to pray for daily bread. Bless all who harvest the grain of the soil and fruit of the vine, and help us to work in sustaining fields, gardens, and wild places, that all people are fed and life flourishes on earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, you gave all who would follow you a new command of love. Guide all who govern by this principle of love that they would pray for their enemies, work for peace that brings an end to war, establish justice that provides equity for all, and act with compassion that lifts the weak. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, you suffered betrayal abandonment and death, grant healing and comfort and hope to all who suffer anxiety, are sick and who face death. Strengthen and save those we remember before you. Michael, Julie, Linda, Gray, Jetty, Angie, Linda, Drew, Norma, Laura, Jean, Ken, Tanner, Christopher, Eileen, Sarah, Danny, Mindy, Louisa, Ben, Tina, Martha, Ingrid, Shirley, Jimmy, Roxy, Bill, Sergey, Arlene, Oakley, David, Carl, Danielle, Rachel, Joseph, Virginia, David, and Jay. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for and commemorate the meal and the new command you have given to us on this day. Bless the work of this congregation to always find your saving grace truly present in your holy supper, that fed and forgiven we might love you and serve our neighbor. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord Jesus, you bring new life out of disappointment and death. Grant grace to console and encourage us that we might follow the saints who have gone before us into eternal communion with you and bring us with them into your kingdom of everlasting life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people, led them on all their journeys, and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, in a wonderful sacrament, you strengthen us with the saving power of your suffering, death, and resurrection. May this sacrament of your body and blood so work in us that the fruits of your redemption will show forth in the way we live, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.